Hello, guys. Today, I'd like to provide a brief history on the internet. As some of you are aware, what we recognize as today's internet first started in 1969 under the name ARPANET in the United States. That stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. Now, to put this into context, ARPANET was not a commercially available network you could just personally tap into. It was a government-only network that began as a military project, which was limited to, uh, only to computer systems in their walled garden, uh, mainly for military and educational institutions. The reason why this is considered to be the father of the modern internet is because it used TCP IP packets and protocols for transmitting data, and that's what we use still to this day as the core functionality of the internet. Uh, between 1969 and 1991, ARPANET expanded from just a U.S. military-type project to something that, like I said, educational institutions uh, signed on to, especially in the 70s. Um, it's primarily was based on the West Coast and the Northeast and connecting uh, supercomputers uh, of that era to each other, and uh, basic terminals as well. It used uh, communication to uh, remotely connect these uh, computers. So... It was, but it still was not commercially available to the public. There was essentially no net neutrality, which limited these networks. Different networks were very difficult to communicate through. And despite uh, TCP IP protocols being used by these systems, it didn't mean you could easily just send an email with an at symbol. Uh, in the early days, it required a bit of programming knowledge to get an email to bounce through these various networks uh, to get to the end user you intended to deliver an email to. Also, different networks didn't share bandwidth freely. There were costs involved. Again, there was no concept of net neutrality. That has to be remembered. Basically, the internet before 1991 was a series of walled gardens, and they had to communicate with each other using much more difficult standards to get information transmitted. And then you had other non-TCP IP, non-governmental protocol, commercially available providers like CompuServe, like Prodigy, like Genie, local bulletin board services that usually ran out of a person's house like a hobbyist uh, that loved computers. And then you had Quantum Link, which became AOL in 1991. Basically, if you wanted to communicate with other computers and transfer files, and you were not in the government or an educational institution, you used one of these non-internet services before 1991. Because what we know of as the internet was only available to education and government facilities before that time. Something happened in 1991 that changed everything. There was an agreement struck. Essentially, it was the beginning of net neutrality. That's a theme you'll have to remember throughout this whole discussion. All of these competing walled garden networks, whether they were TCP IP uh, through ARPANET or not, they had to connect to one another um, um, basically uh, with no limitations on their individual network's data usage. They all agreed to change from that old um, walled garden mindset. They agreed to operate under the TCP IP transmission systems and what we know of as the modern internet was born. This agreement was called the Commercial Internet Exchange, or CIX. I encourage you to search the term CIX and Commercial Internet Exchange to research more on the topic if you're interested. So really, when we talk about today's internet, its date of birth is really 1991, not 1969. Those old networks were limited, not commercially available to the public, and they had difficulty talking to one another, and what we call net neutrality did not exist before 1991. Something else happened in 1991 that revolutionized internet connectivity. An Englishman, educated at Oxford, Tim Berners-Lee, released his invention of Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, and the first web browser. Tim Berners-Lee's HTTP standard would revolutionize the internet, because no longer was the internet just the, uh, basically, internet usage, it was no longer the domain of computer geeks who understood programming. Remember, the internet was mostly text and complicated commands before the web. Lee's invention allowed for regular text and graphics to be displayed in a graphical interface by simply uh, typing in a domain into your browser window. When you type, for example, youtube.com, 
you get a user interface that's easy and simple to use. That is because of the work that was began by Tim Berners-Lee. So, in summary, what happened in the 1990s is that the internet and the online world exploded. Remember, things were working incredibly fast. The internet as we know it didn't even become commercially available or commercially exist until 19, uh, or it didn't exist in 1989, for example. By 1991, with the CIX agreement and net neutrality, it combined with the invention of the web, and the internet became commercially available to the public. The former non-TCP IP online services like AOL, Prodigy, CompuServe, they essentially became ISPs instead of their walled garden services. AOL was obviously king of the 90s since they had absolutely the most worldwide access phone numbers. And you could see the evolution AOL went through. In the early 1990s, AOL was a walled garden, non-TCP IP online service with only AOL content and with a little bit of uh, limited external email services. By 1993-1994, AOL updated its software and its networks, and it began to offer a web browser and other services like FTP and newsgroups through a proxy service. But it still wasn't a full-blown ISP yet. In 1996, AOL released version 3 of its software that included a TCP IP compliant dialer. Basically, in a short five years, the internet went from starting out in 1991, as we know it, then providers like AOL had to adapt and become TCP IP compliant internet providers, which AOL finished that conversion in 1996. Numerous other ISPs and providers became available in the 90s, even before AOL became a full-blown provider. But what killed dial-up was the advent of DSL and cable broadband services. So, in the 2000s, broadband and then Wi-Fi made the need for dial-up obsolete. And that, my friends, is a brief history of what we call the Internet. It went from a messy set of walled gardens that couldn't communicate between them or couldn't communicate well, and then in 1991, net neutrality and commercially available internet based on the TCP IP standard became available to the public. Networks agreed to route traffic over competing networks without the traditional limits. And it's a lesson to the importance of net neutrality, my friends. And all the walled gardens came crumbling down in the 90s as the internet took shape. We do not need to rebuild those walled gardens. By the 2000s, broadband digital services set the new standard. We haven't looked back ever since. Thank you for watching.